Grab your boards and paddle out into the open water. This is our review of The Perfect Wave. The Perfect Wave is an action points game about putting together the best wave and trick cards to score the most points. And I think this game really triggered my analysis paralysis and just feelings of regret. I really enjoyed the back and forth struggle of trying to put together your perfect wave and then paddling out to write it. We'll tell you all about it after this quick how to play. Players spend up to two action points to either play wave or trick cards or paddle out further on the water. Players can play cards from their hands or from an open draft area called the pier board. After each player's turn, the maneuver cards, which are made up of trick cards and paddle out cards, cycle through at least one card. When all the maneuver cards run out, all the players who haven't taken a turn yet in the round will go. Players need to play high value trick cards, but they also need to be able to paddle out in order to play those trick cards before the end of the game. After the maneuver cards run out, players ride their waves and score points based on the wave size and the tricks performed. The player with the most points wins. We were sent a copy of The Perfect Wave from the Op Game so that we could do this review video. If you'd like to find out more or buy a copy of the game, check out the links in our description below. And if you are enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. Surf's up! So this is an action points game, which means you have up to two points to spend per turn. And the value of the actions that you're performing cost either one or two. So you'll, everyone will get a handy dandy reference card, which will go over kind of all the actions that you can possibly take and then what they cost. So you can see one action point or two action point. But the main actions you're taking are playing wave cards, which look like this or like this, and they have numbers and you play them on your really long wave board. Or you can play maneuver cards, which are either gonna be tricks, which will have point values that you play above waves, or paddle out cards, which let you paddle out. So the two hardest things to keep track of while you're playing is you have to build a good wave you have to have good maneuvers or good tricks on top of those waves, but you also have to paddle out your surfer further out. The key is, as you're paddling out, you can no longer build behind you. So you have to kind of gauge of, all right, what do I build? How far do I paddle out? Do I have enough turns to be able to get out there? So when the maneuver deck runs out, the game ends, and you're gonna ride the wave back wherever you are. So even if you built it really long, if you didn't get there, you don't get to ride the whole thing. So it is a fun struggle to really figure out do I paddle? Do I build? Do I risk not being able to surf my whole thing? Or do I really want to build up those points? So I really like that struggle. Yeah, when you first take a look at it, right, you have your board, everything's mostly just pictures and numbers, even the wave cards. Every now and then the trick cards will have just a few words and everything. So it looks like you're like, oh, I can be relaxing. Uh, you know, I can be relaxed. I can build my wave and then just, you know, just coast and surf it on back. Day at However, the beach. Yeah, just a day at the beach. However, though, it's like, oh, okay, hold on. I started this sequence, but now I do want to go for doubles. Oh, but these numbers are showing. So this is where it really engaged my, uh, like just analysis paralysis, like, oh, but I already started this sequence. Do I, do I go for a higher sequence or now do I go for kind of like a, oh man, this is, this is, I don't know what's going on. And then as the game goes on further, you're like, oh, I didn't paddle out far enough, but I have such an awesome wave that's out here. It'd be kind of fun if we just built a collective wave. And like, let's say we were, I was too busy building, but then you paddled out and it's like, ah, he got me. He got me because I didn't paddle out far enough. Depending on the player count, the number of paddle out cards will change. And sometimes they may not be that many, especially if you're playing with a big player count. And especially if someone's taking all the paddle outs, if they know, if they've played before, like, oh, I'm gonna need a paddle out, so I'm gonna be able to do that stuff. And you can use your surf wax, which are like bonus tokens that you start off the game with, and you can earn more if you use your action points to gain them. You can also turn those in to paddle out as well. But because the paddle outs are so rare and if they aren't there, even if you are trying to get that mix right of building your wave and paddling out, sometimes just the luck of the draw, you're like, I don't have any way to paddle out. I've used all my surf tokens. I don't have any paddle out tokens. They're not refreshing when it's my turn. And it gets really frustrating when after your turn, you have to cycle through the cards and you discard one and the next card you reveal is a paddle out. So the player after you gets the paddle out just because you had to cycle through the card. So there is a little bit of frustration with trying to get those paddle out cards. 
Yeah, I would say on the very first play, I didn't feel it was very intuitive how important paddling out was. I knew you had to do it. I knew eventually you had to ride the wave, but like the cutthroat nature of like, no, why did you get it this turn? Like of just the paddle out cards. I I think if you didn't mention anything on one of the games, I probably would have just been like, oh, I rode, a, rode just a, a two wave back. <laughs> like, oh, all this and then rode a two wave back. But I was able to get out to like six or seven spots and then, you know, get some points. However, still, I was like, oh, well, good thing you said something because this would have been a lot lower. It would have been 10, <laughs> like 11 or something. The other thing that we noticed when we were at Gen Con is they had a big sticker on it and a big uh, display for it was that it was the Cardboard Edison winner of 2021. So being Cardboard Edison finalists ourselves, we were like, oh, that game won two years ago. So let's go check out that one. So we were watching people play and it looked very interesting. So I'm glad that the op sent it to us so that we got a chance to play. I just like the theming about surfing and how like, yeah, you're building the wave, you're adding the tricks and then you're just riding it back. Like I really enjoyed how they did that. And then even just to kind of help you if you made a mistake here and there, you got your little surf wax tokens that you can get more of. I think getting it's a little expensive, but overall, I. I like what they did with this. I really like the combination building that you do of building your wave and then putting the tricks on top of it, trying to get the most points. I do like the struggle a little bit of making sure you paddle out. I do think that that will be a hurdle for people playing it the first time if you don't explain it or if they just don't comprehend it enough. They may be like, oh, that sucked. My wave wasn't very good. I, this game wasn't a lot of fun. So I do think it has that step to get over. But I think once you kind of understand it and master it, for lack of a better phrase, then it's a lot of fun. What did you not like about the game? So I think it's just what we've been talking about, right? The whole paddling out. Like, I don't think it's intuitive for first time players. Even if you do mention it or say it, I, I don't think it really lands until you actually lose very bad on that first game. Really like triggered a lot of things that like negative feelings in me. So I was just like, ah, frustrating, <laughs> frustration's happening. However, I still had a lot of fun. And you know, once you finally realize that you can go back and play it again and you're like, okay, I know what not to do now. <laughs> so the biggest thing that I didn't like, and this may sound petty and it's kind of weird, but it's a really high scoring game. <laughs> and when we were at Gen Con, Lee's like, yeah, they're scoring like 100, 200 points. It seems like a really high scoring game. You must be able to do a lot. I was like, oh, okay. When you're learning it and when you play, you're like, yes, it's high scoring because they put a zero at the end of everything. So at the beginning of the board, it's 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 30, 30. It could have just been one, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Your tricks are 10, 20, 30, 40. Again, they just put a zero at the end. It could have been one, two, three, four, five. Same thing with the bonus points. So they made it unnecessarily high scoring. So at the end of the game, it's like, oh, I have 200 points or I have 150. You have 15 points and I have 20 points. Why couldn't you just why couldn't you just do that? And again, I know that's petty, but that's just it's just like why did you do that? <laughs> Overall, I really like the production value of this. The little player boards that you have to create your wave is like the horizon with the sunset. So it really leans into that whole theme of like creating your own wave and stuff. So I really like that. I'm not a big surfer or anything. However, I do know that some of these like barrel and cutback with the tricks and stuff, I, I am familiar with those terms. So it's a little bit of a learning thing there. That's I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm learning a little bit more surfer talk, even though I'm not gonna jump into that world. I'll probably give it a six overall. I really enjoyed this game. I think I liked it more as I played it. However, with this game, you may not be able to get people to play it enough times for them to actually enjoy it. So I do think it has that initial step to get over when you're playing it the first time. But if you play it a couple times and you kind of understand the back and forth struggle, then I think you'll enjoy it a little bit more just like I did. So overall, I'm gonna give the game a seven. And that was our review of The Perfect Wave. What'd you think? Are you feeling peer pressure to play the game? Let us know in the comments below. Once again, we'd like to thank the op for sending this game to us so that we could do this review. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. I'm Kenny. And go party like a board gamer.